Amen and praise the Lord. Uh, truly it's good to be here on today, bringing you greetings again. Dominion Tabernacle, taken by Course Ministries. Uh, we're so thankful to be here, be with you once again. Uh, God is always good and His love endures throughout and through all. And so we're just glad to be here uh, once again and to be able to share with you some inspiring words of encouragement. Listen, I do encourage you to check us out on social media, uh, www.takeitbyforce.net. Uh, there you can go on our website and you can check out who we are and what we have to offer. We've got a lot of great things that we're doing in the marketplace uh, through leadership, uh, creative writing, life skills, workshops that we offer. And so we look for opportunities to collaborate um, youth-minded organizations who have the desire to impact the lives of our young people. So please go on our website and take a look at uh, what we have going on. And if we can collaborate or partner with you in some capacity or another, then please feel free uh, to inbox us and, and, and drop us an email or a phone call. Also, uh, check out our YouTube channel. There's a link on there. Uh, Hour of Power Exchange. Hour of Power Exchange. Ooh, ooh. That is our YouTube uh, channel where we provide uh, videos of our uh, messages that we hope that oftentimes people who are looking for an encouraging word or an inspiring word, but check out the YouTube channel and on there you will find some encouraging messages for you to not only listen to yourself, but to also pass along, pass along uh, to your social media uh, networks and also uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, we're on there as well. So again, uh, the homepage of our website, you can have access to all of those uh, links. But what I want to do on this morning is to continue, really, uh, part two. <laughs> is to continue part two of a message we started looking at, but we were talking about coming out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. You can find that on, on today, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And in looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, last time we were together, we were dealing with the limitation of my competence. The limitation of my competence. And when I say my competence, uh, basically what I mean by that is understanding that as a fleshly being, uh, I am limited in my capacity. And oftentimes in life, what we find is we're oftentimes tested, we're oftentimes presented with circumstances and situations where we realize that I may need a little help. We may need a little help or assistance in regards to this matter here. Because when I look at what I have in all of my knowledge and all of my experience and all of my ability, sometimes, you know, we just need the Lord to help us. And so that's, that has been the, the focus uh, of that of our message here with the limitation of my competence. And so what I want to do again is to continue that discussion coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And really, uh, in this particular uh, chapter here, again here, Paul, who is, as we know, if, if you study and understand the background of this letter here, he is under attack. Uh, his ministry is under attack, and the quality of his workmanship is under attack. And so, you know, Paul's response to that is that, well, we don't need uh, letters of recommendation as our opponents do, but we, we believe that you as individuals, he's saying here to the church at Corinth, that you all represent our ministry. And you all represent our work in the ministry. And we don't necessarily need a letter from you, but more so your life and the investment in which we have 
um, later uh, amongst those believers at Corinth speaks for the quality of the ministry that they have. And, and I like what, what he kind of goes on in 2 Corinthians 3 here, because he says down there, if you would take a look down at verse number 5, and that's where I want to uh, really begin on this morning. If you take a look down there at verse number 5, okay, Look at what he says there. Someone read that for me in uh, verse number five. What does it say right there? Not that we are sufficient uh -huh. ourselves uh -huh. to think anything is of ourselves, mm -hmm. but our sufficiency is of God. Okay, thank you. So now, I want to deal with that verse right there. I want to deal with that verse because what we've been trying to establish here is, is that we need to recognize that we need the Lord. Amen. We need it. And regardless of how much knowledge we have, how much skills we may acquire, and how much experience we may have under our belt, we still need the Lord. Amen. And so I like what Paul says there in verse number five, because he says there now, not that we, he said, we, and when he says we, he's talking about not only himself, but his ministry team. Those whom he labor with side by side in the ministry. He said, now listen, not that we are sufficient. Now that that now that word sufficient, let's deal with that word for a minute. And some of this is a review from the first lesson. But first of all, he deals with the word sufficient. Because when you talk, when you talk about the word competence itself, the word competent. When you're competent or competent, what that means is, is that there is sufficient. And when something is sufficient, what that means is what? There is enough. There is enough. So that's the first definition of the word competence. There is sufficient. There is enough. Now, look at what he says now. In verse 5, he says, Not that we are sufficient. Not that we are sufficient. Not that we are enough of who? Ourselves. So even Paul realizes and recognizes that as they are sweeping through Asia Minor, as they are going from, from region to region and planting churches and following back up with churches and encouraging believers to stay committed and to stay faithful to the call, stay faithful to the gospel, as, he's doing, as, as he and his ministry uh, caravan are going throughout the region, he says, not that we are sufficient, not that we are enough of ourselves. And so he realizes and recognizes that as we are doing this great work, as we are establishing and laying the foundation of Christ throughout these regions here, he realizes and understands that we are sufficient we are not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as ourselves. Hmm? He says, but our sufficiency our enoughness, if, there, if, if I can say that or if, I'll, I'm just going to write that over here next to the side. That may not even be a word, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use it today. <laughs> Somebody say enoughness. 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 Huh? <laughs> At the end of verse five, he says, "But our sufficiency, our enoughness, is of who? God." You see that there in verse five. 
That says a lot right there. So, 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 no matter how big or how small the assignment is, Paul recognizes that we can't sustain this by ourselves. But he says, but our sufficiency is of God. All right? So now if we understand that now, he goes on to say now, but our sufficiency is of God. Now look at verse 6. Look at, look at the next sentence there in verse 6, which says what? Who also, not only is, our, is he our sufficiency, not only is God enough, Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. but he goes on to say that in verse 6, who, have, who also have made us what? Able ministers. Able ministers. That is so key right there. He says, who have made us able ministers, able servants. So Paul realizes and recognizes that what we are doing, had it not, if it's not for God's help, we would not be able to do what it is we are doing. Huh? Now, that takes me into, when we talk about competence then, that takes me into the second, when you talk about competence, the second word. Ability. Somebody say ability. Ability. When you are competent, what that means is you have the ability. Now, ability can come in, in, a, in a few forms, okay? Ability can come through having knowledge, Having skill, skills, and also having experience. Because through your knowledge, through your skills that you acquire, and through your experience in life, you have the ability. God gives you ability, God gives you competence. That's where, so that's where ability comes in. Through your knowledge, through your skills, and through what? Through your experience. Now listen, listen. Even in this level right here, through knowledge, skills, and experience, you still need God's help. Amen. You still need God's help to help you make it through the experience. Hmm? You need God's help to help you understand and, and obtain the knowledge. You need God's help to show you how do I best utilize the skills that I have so that they don't go to waste. Hmm? Paul says, but our sufficiency, our competency, our ability is not all, it is not of us, ourselves, but it, it is of who? It is of God who has done what? Made us able ministers. You got that down in your notes now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what we're talking about here, really, uh, verses 5 through 6. That's the focus. Verses 5 through 6. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about confidence, there's a third, there's a third piece here that you need that, 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 that you need to look at. The third piece is capacity. Capacity. Now, when you talk about having the capacity to do something, okay, what that means is number one, number one, you have to have some type of structure. In other words, be organized. Somebody say, get organized. Get organized. Have some system in place. Have some type of, uh, of routine in place.
And, it, and, and, and it's good to have some type of structure, some type of organization, some type of capacity. Because when you have some type of routine in place, what it does is it helps you to move along. Whether it's an exercise routine or, or whether it's a budget routine, but having some type of routine in place to help you move towards your goal, what it is you desire to do. Another thing, another thing you have to keep in mind when you talk about having enough or having competence, all right, is also having resources. So under so under capacity also comes resources as well. Where does it be? And there are different types of resources. You can have people resources where you may need people to help you accomplish what it is you, you need to do. And now, you know, you know, think about it, it, it. Sometimes we rely upon people because they may have certain skills, certain knowledge that we necessarily may not have, but they have. And so what we do, we hire them or we contract them to come in and help us with their what? Knowledge, skill, or experience. Okay? And, my, and now if you have a job, well, people hire you because they need your knowledge, your skill, your experience to help them accomplish what it is their, their business or organization is trying to do. But now also, not only do you have people resources, but then you also have monetary or financial resources. And so, and, so then, and so then when you talk about capacity, again, capacity, it gives you the opportunity to exercise or to utilize your ability. So in this hour, God, give me the capacity to put my ability in flight. Lord, give me the capacity. Because Paul says that now in verse 6, who has what? Made us able. You see that there? In other words, God gives them what they need. He gives them the capacity. The capacity to do what? To be able ministers. And so, Lord, let that be my request. Lord, give me the what? Give me the capacity. Give me the structure. Give me the organization. Give me the routine, that which works for me. You have to learn how to have a routine. And my routine may be different from your routine, absolutely, because my life structure may be different than your life structure. The life structure of a single person would be different than a life structure from a married individual. And so based upon your life structure, you still have to come up with what? Routines, don't you? Amen. That work for you. Yes, Lord. And help you facilitate God's purpose for your life. And so if God, since Paul said now, our sufficiency is not of us, but it's, it is of God, then God, give me the capacity, give me the structure, give me the organization, Give me the resources. In other words, Lord, help, give me the people resources. Lord, help me to connect, help me to network with the right people. That's key. Lord, connect me with the right people, the right resources, the right monetary resources that I that that, that are needed to do it. 
to put my ability, to put my knowledge, to put my skills, to put my experience in what? What did I say right there? Right. Which means what? Go, take off. Like Paul's ministry took off in Asia Minor, in all different directions. But why was it able to do that? Because God did what? Gave him the capacity he needed. Even when, even when, 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 when they themselves when their backs were up against the wall, who would they who would they lean on and look towards to help them out? Huh? Look here. Go back to uh, say that same uh, book, Second Corinthians. Go to chapter one. We're just going to review for just a minute here, because remember we opened up uh, looking at Second Corinthians, talking about how Paul suffered. And learning that God was a God of all comfort during suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at verse number eight. Verse number eight. Verse number eight. He says there what? For we would not, brethren, have you what? Ignorant. Ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. In other words, we want you to know what we're doing here. We, we, it's not a bed of roses. But it's ups and downs. Good and bad. He says, for we will not rather have you ignorant of our, of our trouble which came to us in Asia. What did he say? That we were what? Pressed out. Pressed. Pressed. That we, now, in some translations it may say burden. That we were burdened out of our mind. Things got out of hand. He says that. That we were pressed out of measure. What does it say next then? Not only were we pressed out of measure, not only were we burdened out of measure. What does it say next then? Above strength. Now, whose strength is he talking about? Mm -hmm. Out of strength. We were in trouble. Wait a minute, you were doing ministry. Yeah, we are doing ministry, but we were troubled while doing ministry. We were perplexed while doing ministry. We were distressed while doing ministry. Absolutely. And, and, he, and he says to the degree in which the trouble was, it was what? It was above. Somebody said above. But something was above you. Have any of you ever been in a situation where it was just above you? And when something is above you, it's just too much. And there's nothing wrong with a believer in Jesus saying, oh Lord, this is too much. Yes, Lord. Too much. Not everything is going to always be within your control. Sometimes there are going to be situations and circumstances that are, that are beyond, absolutely beyond. Because that, what that lets you know is, is that you are limited in your what? To competence. You're not dumb. You're not stupid. No. But sometimes life will deal you something where it is just oh, above your own strength. Someone else has a different translation. Finish out verse 8 for me. What does it say there? Yeah. When after ministry of the Spirit, he gave more glory. Second Corinthians. Yeah. Chapter 1. Verse 8. 
It says, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We are under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despair to life itself. All right! So it was, it was a great despair, great despair, great discomfort. And so then they needed God to do what? Give them the capacity, the, uh, the, the capacity to be able to hang in there. Now, verse 9, read that what it says there. Keep you. Verse 9. It says, Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! They thought that they weren't going to make it. There's nothing unusual about being overwhelmed overburdened with ministry to the point to the degree where you feel like you're not going to make it. You're not the only one that has felt that way. And Paul, and Paul, he says, he says, starts out in that verse, verse 8, but by saying, brethren, we would not want you, we don't want you to go without knowing this. Why did Paul want to make sure that they knew this? Because Paul wanted them to know that ministry takes work. That anything worth accomplishing for the Lord is going to take work. It's going to cost you something. It is going to put pressure on you. It's not going to come easy. So he didn't want the people not to be in He didn't want them to be misinformed. He wanted them to know this. Why? Let them get out there and they say, well, why didn't somebody tell me it was going to be like this? Well, Paul said, I want you to know. I don't want you to sit up here and think that, 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 that I've got it all together or that I don't go through anything. And then when you get out there and life gets you in the mouth and you go, why didn't somebody tell me? Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to know I want to be honest with you. In this hour, we got to be honest with our young people and let them know what you're going through. You're not the only one that has gone through it. Generations that have come before you have gone through it, but they have, but they survived. And so what they need to know is what is your survival tactic? How did you make it over? How did you, how did you come back? Uh, drug addiction? How did you overcome alcoholism? How did you overcome being hooked on drugs? How did you overcome? What helped you? What helped you in your dead circumstances, in your dead situation? We're living in a day and time where sometimes tell people they don't want to be honest. Don't let them, we don't need to let our young people walk around ignorant, not knowing. We got to open up our mouth and tell them. But the old song comes in, I was sinking deep in sin. I was. What, you? Yeah, I was. That's the song. Isn't that the song? You know what the songwriter saying? I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the future, far from the center, far away from God. Young people want to know in this hour, is there anybody out there that feel, that, that's feeling like I'm feeling? Young people out there that are feeling far off. Young people out there that are, that are strong off. Young people out there that feel aloof, far away from God. They want to know, is there anybody out there? Take them to that song and share it with them. I was thinking. Deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very what deeply what staying within. We got a young generation out here that's staying deep within. And all they want to know is: there anybody out there that has that, 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 that been staying? Is there anybody else out there? That's the song of the church. That's the hymn. Very deeply staying within. What singing to rise? We got a generation of young people out here. They are sinking in disparity. They are sinking in drug abuse. They are sinking in alcoholism. They are sinking in homosexuality. They are sinking in depression. They are sinking. Very deeply staying within, seeking to rise no more. But somebody say there's a but. <laughs> <laughs> 
But young people got to know that no matter how far out you are, no matter how strung out you may feel, you have to realize that's not the end of the story. Oh, but that wasn't the end of the song, was it? But the master of the sea, not the master of Fortnite, not the master of PlayStation, not the master of Xbox. No. Not the master of Nickelodeon, not the master of Disney, not the master, but the master of the sea. The master of the universe. And I'm not talking about He Man and Shura, but the master <laughs> of the sea. He was heard. Which lets me know what you gotta do with it. No matter how far out you're singing, you gotta learn how to do a call in the name of the Lord. How did you come with how did you come out call? Yes, Lord. I'm sure Paul and them, they had to do what? They had to learn and say, call on it. When it's above your strength, you have to learn how to look toward the heels. You have to learn how to sit down sometime in your quiet place and put that phone down and say, Lord, I need some help here. Mm -hmm. Put that computer down and say, Lord, I need some help here. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he did what? Lifted me. Now say. Am I? That's the song of the church. That's the hymn of the church. And we got to learn how to teach young people those songs. Those hymns, those aren't just songs just to be written. Those are songs with meaning to them. Finish verse 9. I don't know where I am. Verse 9. Finish out that verse again. Read it. Indeed, we thought that we have received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not. But this! Uh huh. That was a but right there, that verse is it. That we thought we were going to die. But what? But this happened. But it happened! Somebody say it happened. Somebody say it happened. It happened. Sometimes we don't know why things happen. We don't know why things go the way that they do. Yeah, it hurt. Yeah, it, it, it bothered me. Sometimes we just don't know. We just don't know. And I'm sure there were times when Paul and him were like, what in the world is going on? Why are we going through this? Why do we have to look at this? Why do we have to face this? Lord, what is it? What is it? Why? 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 Sometimes we find ourselves just asking, why, Lord? Why? 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 Why are you letting this happen to me? Why do you have to allow me to go this route? Why, God? Why? But it happened. Somebody say, but it happened. But it didn't feel good. Say, but it happened. But it happened. I was upset. But say, but it happened. But it happened. They left me. But guess what? But it happened. It happened. Yes, it did. They talked about it. But it happened. But understand this. It didn't happen to you until it happened to Jesus first. All right, oh, but whatever happened, it happened in your life. Guess what? You're not the only one who went through it. Jesus tasted of it before you did. And he took on upon himself every hurt, every affliction that's imaginable to mankind. But it happened. Why did it happen? That was the point. Verse 9. But why did it happen? Read the verse. But this happened that we that we what? That, that's why it happened. You read it. This happened why? That we what? My what? Huh? Might not rely on ourselves. Might not rely on ourselves. Think that you got it all under control. Oh, I got this. Have you ever said this? Yeah. I got this. 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 God said, okay, you got it. Here you go. Take it. <laughs> and then before too long, guess what? Uh, Lord, um, I, I, I need to I need your help. But that we might not rely upon ourselves, but rather in who? What does it say in verse 9? But on God. See, there was someone in that verse 1. Thank you. Huh? 
It is God who what gives us the capacity yes, Lord. to do what it is we need to do. Yes, do. Does that make sense? Yes, it do. Now make sure you got this in your note because I'm getting ready to. Well, let's see. I think I can. I can keep it up here. All right, now I'm gonna show you something here. No, I actually want to erase this. Now, all right, I'm gonna show you something real quick. Here. So, God give me the capacity to put my ability in flight. All right. Okay, watch this here. This is what we said on last time. What else is competency? Competency is, or competence, somebody say collaboration. Collaboration. I need all this stuff. What is competency again? Call it a collaboration. Collaboration. What is a collaboration? It's a joint effort. It's a working together. That's what a collaboration is. It's a joint effort. It's a working together. It's a collaboration between. You and God. What is a collaboration? It is a partnership. What is confidence? It is a collaboration between you and God. That's what a collaboration is. That's what a, I mean, that's what confidence is. It is, a collab it is a working together between you and God. Now, if it's a collaboration, that means the one, the parties that are involved need to bring something to the table to work with. Does that make sense? You gotta bring something to the table to work with. Well, what do I bring? What do you what are you supposed to bring to the table? Well, let's see. You bring knowledge, skill, and experience. Okay. Well, now if you go back and look at your notes, you go back and look at your notes. Isn't that what competence is? Isn't that what we said competence was, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now listen, you need this right here in order to make it, don't you? Yeah. You do. You need so you need knowledge, you need skills, and you need what? Experience. Now watch this here. Watch this here. Now, as you as you as you get older in life. And as you continue to enhance your knowledge, develop your skills, and you get some experience under your belt, all right, especially when, like when you go to college or what have you, and you develop these three things, then at the, usually at the end of the four years, you get your 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 bachelor's degree in some in some in some uh, area or another. So once you do that, you. Build this right here. Relations. What's that word down there? Credibility. Credibility. Now, I want you to, that's two words in there. Credit. The word credit, and then the word what? Ability. Isn't it? Yeah. Two words in there. Credit. Ability, credibility. Now, when you have credibility, what that simply means is, is that people can trust you. Credibility. People can trust you. People, people can trust you. Like banks trust you. Yes, absolutely. Like a financial institution. If you have credibility, credibility, they know that that says that people can trust you with their resources. 
They can trust you with their what? With their resources. And so when you think about an individual, when you have knowledge, when you have skills, when you have experience, that, teach, that helps you to build what? Credibility with others. Credibility with an organization. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because what you're saying to them is that you can trust me based upon my knowledge, my skills, and my experience to do the job. Mm -hmm. And see, when I say credibility, I'm not necessarily not just tied to money, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying tied they, that you can be trusted with something of value. Mm -hmm. That someone can entrust something, something into your hands and you're going to make good use of it and you're going to be productive. Mm -hmm. Okay? Credibility. That's what God looks for us to bring to the table is some level of what? Credibility. Now, here's the thing with this. Watch this now. Because here's, here's the key. You think. Oftentimes, this right here is outward. People look at you outward. Amen. And again, this is called what? Trustworthiness. It focuses on the what? The outward. Yeah. The outward. I'm just going to write another thing. Trust worthiness. But now you got to remember it's based on what? The outward. Okay? But now that's what you bring to the table. That's you now. Okay? Now. On this side, well, we already, we already know who God is. Amen. But now, that's all good and well over here. Mm -hmm. You see? Because this is what you do to bring trustworthiness among people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now, when you shift over here to the other side, you deal with who now? God. That's a total now. Now, 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 now. now. You deal with people on this side. Come on now. Okay? And you bring your knowledge, you bring your skills, you bring your experience, you bring your, your credibility, your trustworthiness, you know, because you want to be good amongst the people. But now, when you come over here now, you got to understand, okay, now I'm dealing with God now. On, and now. Still, we're still talking about confidence. We're still talking about confidence. We're still talking about your sufficiency. We're still talking about your ability. We're still talking about your capacity. But what are you bringing? And confidence is a what? It's a collaboration between me and God. Come on, man. I hope this is helping somebody. Amen. I hope this is helping you. Now, 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 but now watch this. When, I, when I'm dealing with God, he's not concerned about my knowledge, my skills, and my experience. Why? Because all that comes from him anyway. Come on, man. See, you can impress man with your knowledge. You can impress man with your skills. And you can impress man with your experience as you look to build out with credibility. But when it comes to your relationship with God, he ain't moved by your outward stuff. Why? Because it all belongs to him anyway. He gave it to you. He's not interested in something he already, that already belongs to him. Oh, Lord, Help me, help me, help me. Stop wasting your time trying to impress man and move on over here to the right side of this diagram. <laughs> Why? Because your credibility with man is going to only take you so far. Amen. Freak. And I talk to you. I'm just talking to you. I'm just talking to you. I'm just talking to you. Because when you're dealing with God, you got to give God something to work with. Say, give him something to work with. Give him something oh, to say, work look with. at the neighbor and say, you got to give him something to work you with. If you have to you have you got a room to work with. In that room that you're in, just look around at each other and say, you got to give God something to work with. Give him Well, God, I got a degree. He don't want your degree. He's the master of degrees. Well, God, I got some money. He don't want your money. He's the, the God is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Well, God, I got 
buys some stocks. He don't want no stocks and bonds. But I donated you can build a multi-million dollar. He ain't interested in a multi-million dollar facility. If you don't believe it, go and read on Solomon. Read on Solomon and read how magnificent the temple was that he built. But God told him, no matter how big and how magnificent the structure is, if your heart turns from following him, if your heart is turned from following, I will ignore all this outward stuff. God is interested in the heart. Somebody say the heart. The heart. What did I say? Oh, you got to give God something to work with. So over here, what are you going to give God to work with? Somebody say Hebrews. Hebrews. 11. 11. 6. Now turn to it and read it for me real quick. Hebrews 11. Give God something to work with. What are you going to give God to work with? Well, Hebrews 11 and 6. I hope this is helping somebody. But without faith. But without faith. It is. But without faith. It didn't say nothing about knowledge. It didn't say anything about skills. It didn't say anything about experience. It didn't say it did. It. No. It didn't say anything about silver and gold. But without faith. Go ahead. It is impossible to please him. It is impossible to please him. You gotta have faith. You gotta believe. You gotta bring some faith to the table. Give God something to work with. What does he want to work with? Faith! Keep reading. For he that cometh to God must believe. Must believe. Give God something to work with. Faith. Keep going. That he is. That he is. First of all, you gotta believe that he is first. Keep going. And then he is a reward. Then he is a reward. He has the capacity to what give. He is the reward. I keep going. Diligently seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. So then you need what? Faith. You need to bring some table to the faith. To the you need to bring some faith to the table. Huh? Now, when you start talking about bringing faith to the table, that's not outward. Faith starts with inward. There you go. Inward. Inward. Somebody say inward. 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 Faith starts within. Good. It's not contingent upon your outward appearance. But it starts where it starts with then. It's not contingent upon what you have or do not have on the outside, but it's contingent upon what's what? What's on the inside? Now, when you have faith, when you have faith, now you build credit. <laughs> ability <laughs> with who? God. There you go, man. Now you build credibility with God. Ah, oh, yes. Somebody say, I need some credit. I need some credit. But, I, but the type of credit I need is not the bank's credit. I need some credit that I need God's credit. I need some credit ability with God. Somebody say, I need. I need some credit ability. Some credit ability. With God. Oh, young people, God is saying this. I need some credit ability. Some credit ability. With God. With God. I need some trustworthiness with God. Can God trust me with an opportunity? 
Can God put an opportunity in my hand and say, here you go, I'm going to give you this opportunity. Now, what are you going to do with it? Amen. Build credibility with God. Make sure you got it in your notes. I'm going to get ready to erase it in a minute. Make sure you got it in your notes. Is this helping anybody? Yes, yeah. it is. Amen. You need credibility with God. But if you want credibility with God, you better bring some faith to the table. Oh, Lord. Because it said, you just read it without faith. It is impossible. You ain't going to move it. He ain't going to open the door. It is impossible. It's like a bank. If you ain't got no job, ain't got no resources, can't keep a job, been fired 20 times, go from, 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 from employer to employer, and then you're going to go, they ain't got no money in the bank, got bad credit. And then you're gonna go, you're gonna go to the bank and say, I want to buy a hundred thousand dollar house, a two hundred thousand dollar house, but 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 you have you have no credibility. You gotta have what? Credibility, trustworthiness. Can God trust, can the bank trust you if they loan you some money? Can they trust you to keep a job? And not go from one job to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other, trying to figure out who you are. Get somewhere, get some stability about your life, commit yourself to something, and be great at it. Amen. Listen, you can't do everything, but try to find at least three things. Or at least two things. That you can that you, that, that, that you can be awesome at mm. and be committed to it. That can give God some glory in. Amen. You ain't got to do a hundred things. Just find two good things. Never mind what everybody else is doing, but but but, but you find at least two good things. I got three things. Well, I got a couple things. I'm trying to work on. You see, but just find a few things. Credibility, credibility. So now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So now, now, what does this? I hear you, sir, talking about this credibility thing with God. But now, what what does that really mean? All right, now. Make sure you got this diagram. Are you ready to erase it? And I want to break down what this credibility thing means here. And all we are talking about today, again, is what? The limitation of my what? Competence. Huh? And competence is simply what? A collaboration between who? You and who? And God. All it is, this is an agreement. It's a partnership. But everybody, you got to bring something to the table. Isn't that right? Amen. All right, now, well, let's keep going. <laughs> I'm just trying to be as plain as I can about this. We all, we want credit. We want credit. We want credit out in the world. But do we want credit to God? So now, I hear you, sir. You say now, credibility with God. What does credibility with God? What does that look like? What does that sound like? I hear what you're saying. What does that? I'm ready to tell you. I'm getting ready to tell you. I'm ready to explain it to you. This is what credibility with God looks like. Okay, right here is when you have faith. We just said that, didn't we? Yes. You have faith. Enough to participate. Somebody say participate. Participate. What does that mean? Get involved. Get involved. Absolutely. Get involved. Faith enough to participate in the vision. Somebody say vision. vision. Faith enough to participate in the vision God gives you. Now, let me let, let me let you write that down first. Write that down and let that sink in for me. 
See, cause see, see, cause all that credibility when you take a credit. Oh, I got some credit. Oh, I got some credit. And you're gone. Go. <laughs> oh, I just got some credit. I got some credit. You're gone. Out the door. To the mall. Credibility with God means you have faith enough to do what? To participate. Like you just said, get involved in the vision God gives you. Vision also can mean opportunity. Somebody say opportunity. opportunity. Anybody know what an opportunity is? It's a chance. A chance to do something. Faith enough to participate in the opportunity God gives you. Now, when you have faith, now when you bring enough faith to the table, somebody say you gotta bring enough faith to the table. When you bring enough faith to the table, now you give God something to work with, don't you? Amen. Well, when you have faith enough to participate in the vision God gives you, now what is he gonna do? All right, now here we go. Now, this is the part we like. This is the part we like here. Y'all know it. This is the favorite part right here. This is the good part. What is God going to do? Huh? Now, watch this here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, watch this here. Watch this here. He. Somebody say he. He. Who is he? Will. Somebody say will. God will. What is he going to do right here? What will he do? What is he? He will do what? Credit. Now, when you credit something, and it typically, my let you're an accountant, but typically, when you credit, that means you add to it, doesn't it? You add to it, don't you? He will credit. Now, why doesn't he credit? Add to There you go, uh -huh. He will add. Not directly, but this is true. And you know that's the truth. Hallelujah. You know that's the truth. Credibility with God means when you have faith in God to participate in the opportunity God gives you, He will credit. He will add to you what you need to get it done. All of us in here will be clapping up and standing and jumping and shouting. Because at some point in time, God has added to you what you need in order to get the opportunity to go. Amen, God. Amen. That's what credibility with yes. God is that when you have enough faith to bring to the table, God will credit. He will add to you. What you need in order to get the job done, my God. That's what credibility with God is. There's nothing wrong with credibility with man, but if I had to pick and choose, I would much rather have credibility with God because when man says no, God can turn around and say yes. I know that. Yes, sir. Credit ability with God. Again, faith enough to participate in the vision that He gives you. Then He will do it. And He will credit. And that may not always mean money, but it can be people resources. Just depending upon what a center, what it may be, just be a center. He needs you. You need an answer. You need an idea for your circumstance. Of what you need. Amen. Why? Because you're looking for God to increase your competency to help you. You 
have to realize and understand that about him. He doesn't mind helping you out. But you got to show him that you're worthy of his help. You got to live a life that, that's pleasing to him. Yes, yes. That shows yes. that you mean business. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. See, Come see, on now. You go to a bank, you're not going to go in there and talk that foolishness. No, you're going to go in there and what? Talking what? Business. Aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, when you go to a negotiating table, you don't come to a negotiating table talking foolish talk. No, you go talking what? Business. Business. When you go to apply to a university, you don't put on that on that application a bunch of crazy and foolish stuff. They'll laugh you out of the room. They'll laugh your application and right on out of the room, turn it over and say, next no. up. You got to put some thought. You got to put some effort into so if we put all of this into these man-made systems, then you can get then you need to come to the table with God and be serious. Do you have a vision that's serious? Or are you just trying to create a name for yourself? Because if that's the case, then you don't need God's help. If it's going to be all about you, then you got it. There you go. Go for it. Great. But if God, if you have a vested interest in, if it's a vision that, that God has given you, that's going to bring him glory at the end of the day, then do you not know he will credit you? He will put resources in place. He will put people in place. To help yes. accomplish, yes, sir. that's called credit ability. Let's go. Do you look when I went to college? I remember when I went to college, and one of the concerns I had when I was going to college was, well, when I'm not able to come home, where would I be able to go and worship and fellowship? And 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 the Lord had already had had prepared this elderly couple. I'll never forget them. This elderly couple who. Uh, I, had, I had met and, and they had extended the invitation. They said, you know, now whenever you are able to go home and you want to go to church, just give us a call Saturday night and we'll come by and pick you up on Sunday morning. And for years, look, for, and for, for many years when I was in, in college, this couple, they came and picked me up. They took me to church. You know, and then after they would stop me by Hardy's, because there was a Hardy's restaurant right up the street from the church. They let me get a little chicken box. I take that chicken box back home, go back up to my dorm room, eat my chicken, and get ready for the week coming up. But I was able to eat my chicken in peace because I had gotten a good word that morning. Amen. Why? Because God had credibility with God. Because when I went to college, I went with a mindset. To do good and to do what was right. Amen. And to not squander the opportunity. And he said, because you, you have a willingness, because you have a desire to do good, and I believe that's why he put the opportunity in front of me anyway, because he knew that I was going to make good on it. He said, I've already got a couple in mind. I've already got someone who's going to help you. Help take it and make sure you get the word. And, I, and, I, and it, it, it's, it's good to me because even to this day, I have cassette, I have cassette tapes of the messages that I heard when I went to when I went to that, that church. And, and some of those cassette tapes, even I mean, they, they, they still I can still play them. They're dated far back as 1992. Mm -hmm. 1992, 1993. I still have them. And the word that told those cassette tapes is still relevant here in 2019. Almost mm -hmm. getting ready to be 2020. But I said all that to say, this, that's the, when you have that inward desire and you have faith, you give God something to work with. Amen. So, oh, so now, now, now I'm going to stop there because what we're going to do on next time is we're going to look at a, an example. We're going to look at an example of this in the character of, uh, of Abraham. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and give you the scripture. 
uh, and you can read this in, in your own uh, devotional time this week, uh, Genesis chapter uh, 15, Genesis chapter 15, and then uh, Romans chapter 4. Genesis chapter 15, Romans chapter 4, it talks about basically what we talked about this morning. It talks about uh, when there's a lack when, 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 you, when, when you don't have enough capacity, when you don't have the, that, 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 you, that you fall a little short and you need God's help, God's help. And so, this, and so if, you, if you go ahead and read those stories, if you read those chapters, Genesis 15, Romans 4, it's a good example that illustrates what we're talking about here. And, 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 and we will and we will and we will follow back up on next week and look at how this man Abraham Abram at the time that was his name Abram God gave him a credit because Abram had faith. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. And and the and, and I'm not going to get but and the beauty of it is. Is that at the time when God gave him the credit, he was uncircumcised. Now, somebody was saying, what does that mean? And I'm going to explain that next week. But all I'll say about this, all I'm going to say about that, and I'm going to stop is circumcision is of the outward. Circumcision is of the what? Outward. And let me tell and, 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 and I'll say this. Sometimes we, we, we may not be able to bring all of the outward resources that are needed to the table. As I had up here before. But that don't move God. The, no, the, what moves God? Not what's on the outward, but what's on the, the end. And I'm going to stop right there. Read it. Genesis 15 and Romans 4. Yes, then you meet me back here next week and we'll go into part three of this message the limitation of my competence amen amen listen I want to pray on today don't know where, where you are in, in, in regards to your own individual circumstance or situation but uh, but who knows? Uh, God, he knows. He knows exactly where you are. He knows what's going on. and Wherever your limitation is, I pray that you can muster up enough faith. If you're unsaved, my prayer for you is that you muster up enough faith on today. If you're unsaved and you don't know who Jesus is as your Lord and personal Savior, but as a result of you in this word, so you, you, you've managed to, to muster up enough faith and say, you know what? I want to do something different with my life. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of, I'm sick of sinking deep in sin. I heard the word of God on today. I heard that there is a better way, that there is a lifeline, that there is a Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. And I believe I have enough faith right here. I want to give my heart and my life to him. If that's you all today, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I heard the word. I'm sinking far off the peaceful shore, but I heard the word. And I and I have enough faith on today to believe that you came, you died for my sins, that you were crucified, that you were buried, but then you were raised up. And that you now, you sit on the right hand side of the Father interceding on my behalf. I believe that on today, and I want to receive you into my life as Lord and personal Savior. Come in, Jesus, right now. Come into my heart. Come into my mind. Make me anew. Show me your purpose for my life. I ask you to come into my heart now and make me anew. Make me afresh. I receive you into my heart now, Lord. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me and you weren't saved, and I believe that God has saved you, the next step is to find you a good Bible teaching church. Go to that church. 
Let them know that you just got saved. You want to learn as much as you can. You want to be a part of the new members. You want to learn. You want to grow. That's the key. Growth is the key. Growth is the key. And I just want to pray for all. Father, we thank you now. We thank you for the believers. We thank you, God, for the backslider. They're going to backslid today. You come on back. Get yourself together. We come against the enemy. We come against depression. We come against oppression right now. We come against strongholds, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for a peace of mind, God. We pray, God, that you would just strengthen your church, strengthen your people, Lord. God, we need you. We don't have it all together, but we need you to come into our hearts and to, to, to suffer with us each and every day. At any given time, Lord, we're subject to fall off the wagon. But God, we thank you for your word that comes to challenge us and to lift us up once again. Father, we thank you for being our sufficiency. We thank you for giving us the knowledge, the experience that we need in order to be able to do your will. Have thine own way in us and be glorified. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless at his coming. To him be dominion, honor, and glory. Let everyone say amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you back here on next week.